So here we are again. You all seem to love stories about the Indrangheta and its main representative. So here's one more to get your teeth into. Giuseppe D'Agostino is a famous name. This dangerous mobster was one of Italy's most wanted men, a fugitive who managed to elude law enforcement for numerous years. Born in 1967 in Loriana di Borello, Calabria, his story is deeply intertwined with his hometown and numerous bloody events that led him into hiding until his arrest in 2006. Now, Giuseppe was one of Italy's 30 most wanted fugitives, but what's his story? How did he come to hold the position as the head of a powerful Calabrian crime syndicate? Well, Giuseppe D'Agostino was born into a family well established into the criminal circuit, namely the D'Agostinos. This clan is part of the Ndrangheta and its influences touches more than one municipality. Loriana, Di Borello, San Tiliaro, Dello Ionio, and Canolo. The D'Agostinos exercised their power not only in Calabria, but also in Sardinia, thanks to the operations of the Loriana Borello Locale. The Locale is a coordinating structure of the Andrini that needs 49 affiliates to activate. So the D'Agostinos have always operated in Canolo, and the police, thanks to some investigations, were able to discover that the Canolo Locale is part of a larger organization, the Corona. Now, Giuseppe D'Agostino officially enters criminal notoriety because of a feud, the Loriana Faida. So between the 1980s and 1990s, Loriana di Borello was the backdrop for a terrible and bloody feud, pitting two factions against one another. The first consisted of the Andrina of the Albanese Cutelle Tassone, the second, the Ferentino Cindamo Lamari D'Agostino. And excuse my Italian. Underlying the struggle were disagreements on the part of both groups over the decisions of the former head of the clan, Giuseppe Gulacci. Now, the involvement of other major clans, which supported one side over the other, widened and made the conflict greater and more violent. A long series of murders were, was interrupted only by careful investigations, arrests and convictions that were part of the trial known as the Green Plan. The feud, however, resolved itself thanks to the intervention of the Mancuso of Limbari, the Peschi, Piromali, and Bellocco. In all this, Giuseppe manages to seize an opportunity as his family prevails over its adversaries. And during this period, he also carries out 10 murders, some commissioned by the Bellocco Cosca. And from this time on, the mafioso manages to impose himself on his territory and gain power through drug trafficking. In 1997, Giuseppe D'Agostino disappears from the police's radar and becomes a fugitive. Numerous crimes hang over his head, after which he spends more years in hiding. International drug trafficking allows him to become more powerful and a leading member of the Bellocco clan of Rosarno, as reported by law enforcement investigations. Giuseppe is wanted for conspiracy to commit murder, drug trafficking and mafia association. The measures against him are many, but the man still manages not to be arrested for nearly a decade. D'Agostino is also involved in the Mafia War and is charged with the killing of Michele Messina and Francesco De Bartolo. Messina's murder, murder also takes place in the Veneto region, making him a wanted person in this region as well, not just in Calabria. In fact, the prosecutor's office in Padua charges him with murder and a pre-trial detention order is issued in 1991. And these are the reasons that lead law enforcement to place him within that list of the 30 most dangerous and wanted fugitives in Italy. But in 2006, justice finally manages to catch him by surprise. The Hunters of Calabria, who were a special squad formed in 1991, put an end to the season of kidnapping that was prevalent. Together with the Car Carabinieri from the Provincial Command and the Ross, stealthily surround D'Agostino's hideout. The mobster is hiding in the countryside of Rizziconi. He's 39 years old and is engaged in a summit with four of his affiliates. The mobsters have probably struck a deal and are now celebrating with fish and champagne. But the celebration is interrupted by the military raid and D'Agostino is finally arrested. The arrest of the fugitive, along with that of the other powerful mobsters in the Calabrian territory, was described by law enforcement as an excellent and highly coordinated operation that helped make the justice system's response to the criminal actions of various clans that much more effective. But the story of Giuseppe D'Agostino is like a mirror reflecting the stories of many other powerful mobsters who've been arrested or continue to operate their trafficking hidden and protected from the territory and their allies. 
D'Agostino, with his ferocity and determination, won a place at the top of his organisation and managed to expand his power even abroad through his drug trafficking. Only long and careful law enforcement investigations and capture operations were able to halt this inevitable rise. A tough figure in a tough world finally brought to justice. And another fascinating character in this hidden world of criminality that we love to examine on this channel. But don't forget we've loads more videos like this coming up, so do make sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to spread the word about us. And even leave a comment as we do love to read what you think and indeed what areas you'd like us to cover. So until next time, we'll see you next time. Ciao.